Hi there, I'm Ranger Heidi from Mission Trails Regional Park, one of our nation's largest urban parks. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a story about a special critter and afterwards we'll learn some actual information about this critter followed by a fun arts and craft project. So our story today is about a critter that you may have seen in your neighborhood, but only out during nighttime because this critter is nocturnal. Um, this is a critter that a lot of people would not be happy to run into because if you scare it, it has a special weapon, a special protection or defensive mechanism that it can use, which would leave you smelling terrible. So I bet you can guess what critter it is now with that hint, right? That's right, it's the skunk, the good old skunk. Our story is called, Is That a Skunk? Written by Gary Bogue and illustrated by Chuck Todd. One morning, Lucas and his family are having breakfast when Lucas spots something. <gasps> Is that a skunk, he says? Where's hot dog, mom shouts. Make sure he doesn't get outside with that thing. They wait for the skunk to leave the doghouse, but the skunk doesn't leave. Now what? Days pass. Lucas, Lily, and Hot Dog have fun taking afternoon walks. So does the skunk. One day, Lucas and Dad meet the skunk outside their front door. Yipes, Dad whispers, back away slowly. Luckily, they make it inside unsprayed. This skunk has us surrounded, Lucas says. Why is it hanging around our yard? He decides to do some research. Google, where do skunks live in town? They live under houses, under decks. They crawl in by tearing off vent screens. Sometimes they live under piles of wood and debris in backyards. And sometimes they live in dog houses. Google, what do skunks usually eat in someone's backyard? They hunt for snails, mice, earthworms, lizards, snakes, grasshoppers, crickets, berries, and fruit that falls from trees. Lucas's family begins to get used to the skunk living in their backyard. They even begin to like the skunk. It has become a neighbor of sorts, a neighbor they don't want to go near. But one afternoon, Lucas can't find hot dog. And then everyone hears barking and they run outside. <gasps> oh no! Too bad hot dog didn't know the warning signs. The worst thing you can do is bark and run after a skunk. Too late. <gasps> Poor hot dog. So down here it shows you the warning signs as a skunk staring at you means don't do anything to scare me or else the skunk stamping his front paws means go away or I will spray. A skunk lifting up its tail means last chance and a skunk doing handstand or paw stand means too late, get ready. Them. Hot dog runs in circles, rolls around on the grass, even turns somersaults trying to rub off the horrible stench. Lucas knows it's probably no use. Then he notices something in the doghouse and everything begins to make sense. Hot dog needs a bath. Mom mixes up a special cleaning formula from a pet column she found in their local newspaper. Let's see if it's gonna work. 
Everyone helps wash Hot Dog while the Skunk family watches from the doghouse. Lucas finds out that the babies will need to live in the doghouse for another month. It is easy to let them stay. They're cute, huh, little guys? They're called kits. Early one evening, a few weeks later, someone leaves the kitchen door open and Hot Dog slips out into the backyard. He is curious, but doesn't bark. He and Mama Skunk just stare at each other as the skunks walk away from the doghouse. It is time for the teenage skunks to start learning how to live on their own. Lucas and his family watch from the window as the skunk family heads for a hole under the fence. The skunks are off to see the world and Hot Dog has reclaimed his doghouse. So that's the end of the story and now there's sort of a post story that actually shares some information about skunks. Don't leave food for cats and dogs outside. Skunks, opossums, and raccoons find and eat it at night. It makes them come back to your yard. Put seed catchers under your bird feeders to catch falling bird seed. Skunks like to eat bird seed they find on the ground. Signs of skunks digging in your yard. They leave little trenches about three inches wide by five inches long as they search for earthworms and grubs. Skunk spraying power. Skunks can spray to distances of 15 feet. The odor is so potent, it can be smelled more than a half mile away. Okay, so over here, we have an actual skunk pelt. Um, I'm guessing most likely this poor skunk was a victim of a car trying to cross the street, which is sadly so common. Um, and you can see this is about a average size adult skunk, though they can get a little larger and a little fatter. And um, so they're about the size of a house cat, a domestic house cat. And you can see they have this style in white stripes that come down the middle of their back and continue on the outer edges of their tail. Now, normally their tails are much more bushy than this, but for some reason, this specimen we got is kind of lacking some tail fur. He's, he's kind of a little scroungy, um, but mind you, when a skunk raises its tail to warn you that it's going to spray, it fluffs up its tail on purpose even more to make it stand out and looks even more fluffy than it actually is. So that's the, the warning sign. They have uh, very stubby little legs. And in fact, you wanna make sure in your backyard that you keep your garbage lids secure because skunks are omnivores, which means they eat plants and animals, pretty much anything. They're actually scavengers as well. So anything that's out and easily available, they're gonna take advantage of. And it's uh, common for them to go in to garbage cans and scavenge through all the food scraps and containers that smell yummy. For speaking of food, the foods they like to eat, but well, one of their favorite foods is insects. They love spiders and snails and slugs, and they use their front claws on their front paw that has long claws, especially for digging. Um, insects make up a main part of their diet, and so you can even call them an insectivore. You may have heard of a carnivore that eats only meat and an herbivore that's like a vegetarian and eats only plants. And then we have insectivores that eat only insects, right? So using these long toenails, the skunk, this is what his footprint or track looks like. So you might see some if you have mud in your backyard. And then even more evidence, the areas where he has dug looking for insects and bugs and grubs, um, it'll look like a uh, shape of a snow cone, like you took a snow cone and stuck it in the ground and you'll have a little excavated dirt pile outside of it there. And if you see that, you'll know that's a clue that you've had a skunk visitor. So um, <laughs> for eating those insects, the skunk has these nice, sharp canine teeth, similar to your cat or dog. Notice that they're nice and sharp and pointy. 
And, but he also has in the back some flat molars, just like we have, and that he can use for crunching and, or uh, grinding vegetation. So that's why he's able to eat meat and plants and insects, right? Now, you might find some scat if you have a skunk in your yard. Scat is the science name for poop, animal poop. And the skunk scat is usually black in color and it usually doesn't have a, a distinct shape. It's like a little pile. And if you took your foot and you stepped on it lightly and crumbled it apart, you would see it's mostly insect parts. So you might see like some beetle wing covers or little legs in there from all the exoskeletons of the critters of the insects it's been eating. Or maybe if you have in your backyard fruit trees that your skunk was able to take advantage of, you might see evidence in the scat maybe some seeds from that fruit that it ate and so forth. So as you can see, it's not a bad thing to have a skunk visiting and hanging around your house and in your neighborhood. We can coexist and live in harmony with our fellow skunks here and, and just kind of appreciate them, give them the respect and the space they deserve. And then they in turn will provide the service for us by uh, keeping down the, the insect population, right? So finally, we're gonna now make a craft. We're gonna make your very own skunk that uh, you can have to put on a shelf or maybe you can give it as a gift to someone. And maybe you can then even share what you learned today all about skunks and the cool, amazing animals that they are. Okay, so I got my clay out of the bag. And what's cool about Crayola Model Magic, you can use scissors to cut it even. It's amazing. I'm gonna use just half of the pack to make my skunk today. So I have half the pack, but I'm gonna then cut about one third of that off Oops, for my skunk's head. So let's go ahead and everybody knows how to do this. <laughs> Roll it into a ball. For the head you can even use the table if you want to help and of course you know our skunks don't have perfectly round heads like a snowman so we're gonna then use our fingers to uh, shape it and what i like to do is you can kind of just use one hand and squeeze and pull to make like a skinnier snout they don't have real long snouts as you saw so maybe you can kind of just indent it a little squeeze and pull make a little snout of sorts. And then um, I'm going to kind of blunt the back there a little bit. And for the ears, watch this, this is really fun and easy to do. I'm gonna take my index pointer finger and my thumb and I'm gonna pinch and pull up. Look at this. Pull up the clay, look, ta-da! And then you get ears. They don't have real big ears, you might recall. So they don't um, rely on their sense of hearing as much as some other animals with bigger ears. And let's see, now our skunk is blind. He has no eyes. <laughs> so um, with my tacky glue container, it has this perfect size little lid here that I can use to make some shallow indents. See that? Oh, that actually looks kind of cool right there, huh? <laughs> but we're going to, um, put a little drop of glue in each of those indents that we make, just in case so they don't fall out. Okay, and give our skunk some eyeballs. All right, so I've got my eyes, and now I'm gonna give him a nose, the better to smell with. I'm gonna put my glue in there again. You don't need a lot. And the tacky glue um, does dry clear, just so you know, so if some squishes out, don't panic, it's no biggie. And so, of course, now we need to make our skunk's body with the remaining clay. We're going to roll it this way, kind of long style. Use a table. Table kind of helps. Like a big, you don't need to roll it out too long because we want him to be, have some thickness to him. But you can uh, smooth it out and get all the lines. The lines don't show. And I'm going to kind of... Flatten, that's its butt. I'm gonna make the butt a little wider, <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> and, and we're gonna put his head up on top and the clay sticks to 
itself really well, so we don't even need to use any glue for that part, which is kind of neat, because it just really sticks right on itself. And for his tail, I'm going to use the tip of that um, glue cap again. Okay. So we're gonna take two white pipe cleaners um, and one black pipe cleaner sandwiched in the middle, like so. Dun, 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 dun. And then we're gonna just fold them in half. But we're gonna make sure, oops, make sure to keep the black one in the middle. And I'm gonna squishing it together a little more. I just squish it as much as you can. And then give it a nice bend up. And with your bottom ones here, you can kind of bend them down a little bit. With the bottom, where all the bottoms meet, if you can just give it a twist, nice twist like this to keep them all together. See how I'm doing that? I'm just twisting it. And we can, we can mess with the tail a little bit more once after we insert it. This does need glue. I'm gonna stick some glue in there. And then, there we go. So in the Tusha goes. And then you can actually even squeeze uh, the clay around to kind of seal it on to the pipe cleaners. That way you don't have a hole sticking out. And wow, he's got a beautiful, luxurious long tail. You guys can play around with your tail and do it however you want. That's the fun part, because it's pipe cleaners and you can even you know, change it. But I think I'll leave mine just kind of like that for now. And um, now what's our skunk missing? <laughs> Go no legs, right? So no feet or legs. So we're gonna use our last black pipe cleaner and we're gonna cut it in half. So our scissors come in handy finally. Ta -da! And then we're gonna take each half and cut them in half. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna cut our other half in half. So now we have four small pieces of pipe cleaners and each of these pipe cleaners is now going to be a foot. And how we're gonna do that is you guessed it, we're gonna fold it in half, <laughs> yet again. And we're gonna cut it. Okay. okay, so we have our pipe cleaner now cut into four pairs of two for his four feet. And the way we make each foot is we're gonna take two for one foot and we're gonna crisscross it like the letter X. And then we're gonna take one end of it and we're gonna twist it around like a quarter turn, not all the way around, but we're gonna twist it onto one of the others, but they are gonna then fold up that last one and then we're gonna put them a little closer together so that way it looks more not like a bird foot. You can even curve his claws if you want, ooh yeah. And again, I'm gonna use my trusty glue cap and I'm gonna, up near the top, put a couple and near the back for his legs. Claws, and then we can put our glue in our pre-made holes that we did and then insert his leg there we go so he's got one foot and do the same thing for the other three take one end to give it a nice twist around like so and then pull all three three of them together to the front and lift up the fourth one and remember, these don't have to be perfect because just like us humans, animals aren't always perfect either. Come in all different shapes and sizes, right? All righty. Now my skunk can actually sit at least up on his feet and I can kind of shape him a little bit more if I want, but you know what? Some missing what's wrong with this picture can anybody tell what we're missing from the skunk he's got his black and white tail he's all black oh my gosh what are we missing we're missing his styling racing stripes right so that's where our white clay comes in handy I'm just gonna pull a little piece out because I don't need very much at all and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break off a little piece like the size of I don't know what of chewing gum and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it really skinny. You guys have probably done this when you try to make like a worm or a snake. I'm gonna roll it out to be nice and thin. Oops. Try to make it the same diameter, not like I just did. Let me try this again. <laughs> there we go. Maybe just use two fingers. I think I was using my whole hand and that was too much weight. There we go, that seems to work better. So 
I'm gonna keep rolling it, rolling, rolling, to get it long and skinny as I can. Come on. There it goes, it's getting skinnier, right guys? See how I'm kind of working from one end to another? All right. And I'm gonna start up right on his forehead up here. And I'm going to press it in and it's kind of, it'll like meld in, which is kind of neat. And then I'm gonna come down and around the outside, kind of lined up with the white outer tail fur. And again, like you're gonna gently, just gently, ever so gently, press and it kind of blends in with his body. Look at that, isn't that cool? All right, and now <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I don't have quite enough clay, but that's okay. I'm, I'm gonna add on to it. So I'm gonna start up again. Um, I'm gonna make it like it's almost like a triangle, like right beside the other stripe. And I'm gonna come on down. Oops, I made his ears maybe a little too close together. Huh, that's okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come around the outside to line up again with that outer white tail fur. And then we'll have a proper skunk, right guys? Let me just make my remaining stripe here. No one will be the wiser, right? I'm gonna add on. See, no one will be the wiser. I sound like Bob Ross. And then you can mess around with him and shape him a little better if you want. Believe it or not, he'll dry pretty much overnight. I'm gonna make my skunk's head up a little more because he's not looking for insects right now. He's just chilling. All right, so now it looks more like a skunk. And you guys, as I said again, can play around and um, make different sizes. And you know, you don't have to even make your stripes exactly the way I did them. If you wanna, you can try different designs and make them like a psychedelic skunk, even with different color clays if you want, since it's all about imagination. We. Hope you guys enjoyed the story today and learning a little bit more about skunks and what makes them such cool critters. And hopefully you will be lucky enough, if you haven't already, to um, see a skunk in the wild perhaps. And uh, hopefully now knowing more about them, you can appreciate them and, uh, and share with your friends and family. So thanks for spending this time with me today and uh, Stay safe and happy, everyone.